The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello everyone, my name is Jillian Schaefer and I'm the Marketing Coordinator for SWK Technologies. I'd like to welcome you to our webinar, How to Streamline Purchasing Workflow with Strategic Partners like Amazon Business and Staples, presented by Stanton Dandrell and Jesse Byam of Fraction. A little housekeeping before we get started. Everyone has been placed on mute to keep the background noise down. However, you can submit any questions you have throughout the webinar. To submit a question, look for the question section near GoToWebinar. We'll answer all questions at the end of the presentation. We are recording this presentation and it will be distributed tomorrow to all attendees as well as to those who registered but were not able to attend. Please take a moment at the end of the presentation to answer our one survey question. With that said, we appreciate you taking time out of your busy day to attend our webinar. We're here to help you get the most out of your software solutions and help you find an easier way to run your business by providing you software and industry knowledge, tools, and support whenever you need it. We've invited Fraction here today because they are the industry experts on procurement and spend management. So whether you're here doing research for a new solution or you're just here to learn, we'd like to encourage you to ask any questions throughout the webinar. Lastly, as a quick reminder, SWK is constantly sharing important updates and software tips and tricks on our social media channels. So we encourage you to follow us on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Without further ado, I'll hand it over to Jesse and Stanton. Hello, everybody. Uh, Stanton is uh, <clears throat> putting up the webinar there. Uh, we'll get moving along. My name is Jesse Byam, and I'll be with Stanton Jandrell. He is our C president and CEO. Uh, he will be moving uh, or demoing with me today and, and walking through what we're going to be talking about around the strategic relationships and, and enhancing your partnership with them in the purchasing process. Uh, if you look at Fraction as a whole, uh, Fraction has been around uh, providing procurement solutions for over 20 years and sh we've been sharing that domain experience with our customers for the last 20 years as we've been providing solutions to them. We are a global uh, office uh, or solution with offices in Seattle and Cape Town and we're used by over a thousand organizations and manage uh, we're approaching actually about 15 billion in spend now and uh, with over 200,000 active users and what that means to you is that there's a maturity to our solutions um, you know as we move between where people have been doing a digital transformation to on-prem to now in the cloud, you get the 20 years of domain experience that we have and you're able to transition that and then move that into a more uh, modernized interface and modernized solution to match what you're doing within your businesses. If you look at um, what we provide, we really focus on uh, spending smarter and saving you money. And that happens through proactively manage your spend and ensure that you're, you're purchasing uh, of your business supplies and your spend management is done at the best price and with the most transparency and with the best data available. So our focus is really around streamlining that procurement process. And today we're gonna to talk a little bit about punch out. And so a lot of people are gonna ask, you know, well, what do you mean by punch out? Uh, and it's not a boxing term. So what punch out is, is a process where you're able to connect your system to those vendors that are most valuable to you if they if they facilitate this type of um, transaction. And so one of the best and easiest examples to use is Amazon Business. And what we do is we have a procurement system which will allow us to connect uh, our system to Amazon Business in your business account and allow your users to be able to create a requisition right on the Amazon website and then move that into the system and so we're going to play a little video here that will show you uh, and talk to how, what this looks like just as kind of a little precursor thanks jesse let me start this off and uh, this video uh, just as a caveat is very much focused on our integration into uh, amazon's prime business uh, solution so here we go when it comes to managing your money efficiency goes a long way whether you have little to no budget insight, non-compliant manual processes, or a lack of resources, Fraction is your complete spend management solution that covers requisition to purchase order functionality, expense management, invoice management, and streamlines business purchasing without the risk of rogue spending. You can punch out to Amazon Business directly from Fraction, browse online catalogs, and shop. 
you get access to millions of products from the world's largest online store with business-only pricing and volume discounts. Within seconds, your purchase request lists your shopping cart items and you're ready to submit your request for approval. It's that easy. Once approved and budget compliant, an electronic purchase order is submitted to Amazon Business. Enter your invoice for payment and you're all set to receive your goods in no time at all using Amazon's world-class fulfillment process. Fraction's automated purchasing and approval workflow ensures that your spending is tracked, approved, and on budget. Fraction works in real time, scanning and leveraging your data, and applying AI to help you make better decisions when it comes to spending. With an approval process for purchase requisitions, expenses, data insights and analytics, now you can have the confidence that every order is within budget and compliant with your company's spending policy. You can approve requests from anywhere on any device with mobile access. The biggest saving is not from buying cheaper, but not spending when you don't have to. By controlling and managing your spending with Fraction, you can increase ROI efficiency and reduce operational costs and spend behavior that does not comply with your company's procurement policy. The best money spent is on controlling your spending. Reduce risk and control your spend with Fraction. Talk with one of our expert consultants today. When it comes to managing... All right, guys, thank you. Sorry, the transition is not so smooth when we move from video. <laughs> um, Jesse, I don't know if you wanted to share anything with regard to uh, punch out over here, but uh, really what I want to do, uh, talk a little bit about it, as we move through the demo, is just the massive convenience and cost saving opportunities that exist by purchasing through punch out. Um, we are going to do a brief demo in a short while to show what it physically looks like in action. But one of the major benefits uh, that we'll be showing you is just how easy it is for users to navigate from their procurement solution directly to vendors that are punch out enabled. And uh, in today's demo, we'll be demoing to Amazon to extract data easily and simply from Amazon to populate your requisition and then how to process uh, that simply into a purchase order. And one of the biggest things that often we'd like to present to clients is this bottom point on the left-hand side of the screen, which is just about the massive savings opportunity. Now, Amazon, when, when we chatted to uh, the Business Prime team who drive uh, core partnerships for Amazon, one of the things that they constantly stress is the sort of flywheel effect uh, that has taken place within uh, Amazon's business division where more and more B2B vendors recognize just the sheer volume of purchases that are uh, being made on the platform and as a result are offering the best possible pricing for those goods and services. And that sort of virtuous circle of more business going through the platform, better and better prices, results in savings that they talk about of close to 9%. Um, and, you know, we've tested in several environments. If you on Business Prime, go have a look at your average purchases and the best price that you'll get, for instance, from a Staples, often you'll see a 5 to 10% improvement uh, in the Amazon uh, Business Prime examples that we've seen. And when you look at, for instance, sort of mapping that through to a Business Prime card, you yeah, can probably add another three, four percent to those kind of savings. So it is very, very uh, cost effective if you could move some of that spending through to the Amazon environment. And while it's a visually attractive environment where people are used to buying um, in a more consumer oriented environment, we're bringing that to the B2B experience, but with very precise insight and information, as you would expect on a uh, e-commerce site like Amazon or Staples, where we can deeply understand the items that we're buying, the uh, packs of items, any of the technical specifications. So literally when you see our demo, you'll notice it's literally clicks to be able to identify items, search through multiple vendors, compare uh, items, look for best price, best uh, shipping, uh, best reliability and reviews, and then simply add them through to the requisition. 
Uh, before I transition to the slide, Jesse, anything that you want to sort of share with regard to uh, our prime integrations? No, nope, I think that's great. Okay. So in today's demo, what we're going to look at is how a procurement solution integrates seamlessly into a punch out environment. And uh, the demo that we'll run through is really how to create a purchase request. We'll navigate then through uh, directly to Amazon, look for items, we'll select those items, and then we'll show how easy it is to populate that requisition and route that requisition off for approval within our sort of management environment. Um, the idea here is that users get to use a tool set that they're familiar with, um, get the ease of use of our fraction solution with the convenience of the shopping environment in, uh, in Amazon. And so today's experience is all going to be about the ease of use of punch out. So Jesse, I'm about to break out and load uh, our demo just to show what uh, the punch out in action. So if there's any comments you want to make while I'm doing that, we will break out the application briefly at this point. Um, and, and the thing that we want to focus on here is that while we're using Amazon as an example today, we are actually able to do this with any type of business partner that you have, whether that's Staples, Office Depot, Thermal Fisher, Granger, anybody that is enabled with a CX, CXML uh, protocol uh, through their web store. And so we've done integrations with about 35 to 40 different vendors uh, that we have standardized. But if you have a specific vendor that you work with, uh, as long as they're CXML enabled, we can actually provide the same type of solution and, and what that you're gonna see in the demo today with any of those. And so if you look at the number of people that are actually using Amazon Business and the amount that that's going up, um, you, obviously th that's an easy driver and you can have multiple uh, vendors hooked to your system. So it's not just, you could only do this with one. You can actually have multiple vendors that you use. Stan, it looks like you're ready to go. Fantastic. With the screens up and running, well, let's take you through the buying experience. So the screen you see in front of you right now is our standard fraction spend management solution. On the left-hand side, you have all the modules that make up this comprehensive modular spend management solution. So everything from purchasing to expense claims to AP automation. And depending on the roles that you have in, uh, assigned to you, various elements of functionality will appear, whether it's vendor management, being the buyer and consolidating orders, or better, being able to manage any kind of exceptions that take place in the application. This is all visible from the main screen. For today's demo, though, we're going to focus very much on creating a requisition from uh, Punchout. So in this particular case, I'm going to navigate uh, to my purchase requisitions. Uh, I'm going to create a new requisition. We're going to call it, let's say, an SWK punch out request for ease of use. And you'll notice that there are a couple of options that are available to me. I can either choose catalogs, which are, um, I suppose, lists of goods or services that you as an organization would manage and make that environment of serving that information to your user community easier. Or in today's example, we're going to go to punch out. Now, clicking on punch out then brings up a list of all my punch out enabled vendors that I have uh, in the system. I think Jesse has identified about 30 odd uh, vendors that we've worked with, and most of the big names you would expect to see there are organizations that we've dealt with, with extensively. So, in today's demo, I've just got Amazon, the Staples, and Granger. I'm going to log into Amazon at the moment, um, and by clicking on uh, the Amazon tab, it takes me into the familiar user interface of, uh, of Amazon, with the exception that we now are in the business environment. So that business environment is quite important because it's that environment that uh, provides you with additional savings and ring fences the available items um, that your employees can see. And it's obviously much more orientated towards business kinds of goods and services. So in much the same environment, there's departments that you can buy from electronics, there's specials that are listed the whole time. Um, and let's go buy one of these items. So perhaps we wanna buy a Logitech uh, webcam. So clicking on the item as you would expect before, you can see information around the items, you can select it and choose it. The process of populating a request for fraction is simply the process of adding directly that item to the cart. Uh, we don't wanna add any other kind of protection view. 
we can punch out at this point or we can continue to shop and add to the cart. In this particular case, I'm going to punch out directly from here. And essentially all the content and data from that underlying uh, Amazon transaction is then automatically transferred to the Fraction app. And here you'll see the details automatically appearing in the requisition. We can add any additional information we want. There might be some motivation of where it wants to go. Uh, these can be defaulted. Uh, or a particular uh, approval routing added to this uh, request type. And then we can continue uh, to navigate more shopping items. When we're in a punch-out environment, we can populate the cart from any number of vendors and we can punch out the entire cart as opposed to doing it at a line item level. And when we're happy with that approval process or rather the request population process, we can submit that for approval. And what we're doing constantly is making visible the financial impact of this transaction to users, if you allow them, or to managers when they approve or authorize that request. And so managers, and uh, if in this particular environment, we allow people to um, view budgetary impact and see what the valuable budget is, what the risk uh, profile is, what the vendor statistics are that we've been doing with that organization, with the idea of ensuring that uh, the best commercially competent decision has been made. And I'll just submit and write that uh, request for approval at this point. Um, once a request has been fully approved, there's no further actions from the user that automatically creates a, uh, and releases that item from the shopping cart. So it's a very, very powerful feature for efficiency. As you saw in this particular environment, that request has now actually gone directly through over here to purchasing and has uh, initiated the closeout of the transaction in Amazon. So those goods or services will now be delivered to uh, our organization. So it is really, really a super simple process of uh, from fraction navigating directly to Amazon, choosing the items that you want from your cart uh, or adding it to your cart and then populating a requisition of them. Uh, well, I think it's important to, to to also mention at that point, Stanton, when it goes to the approver, the approver, it, it makes it super simple from their perspective in the sense that they now, when they look at it, and, and we recently did an event with uh, one of our customers, Easter Seals Chicago and Amazon, and we're talking about the integration. And when we talked to the purchasing manager, we said, well, so it's all this, you know, they, they do all that work on get the cart loaded up and they they submit it and, and then what do you do she says well i just review it push a button i said okay well what do you, you know what else do you do she says no that's it i look at it i can see it and it's literally i push the button and it's approved and it goes to to amazon and completes the transaction for me it's the simplest process in the world and it's that type of streamlining of the business that we and that that ability to literally push a button and have it go is is what we've achieved by doing this punch out integration yeah, you're 100 percent correct. The convenience factor is enormous, Jesse. And literally, if, uh, you know, depending on whether we've worked with that beforehand or not. So certainly, Amazon is one that we've worked with many, many, many times. Um, integration, the punch out level can be as trivial as a couple of minutes to a couple of hours uh, for a completely new vendor. So it really is uh, simple and easy. And I think the, the major uh, benefits here is we're just seeing an increasing amount of spend being directed towards these online uh, marketplaces versus traditional type in the detail but in the form essentially in electronically but manually deciding what items that you want and describing them and i think uh you know that trend is being identified by leading analysts like gardner who reckon that more and more that they do three quarters of all spend Will eventually move towards uh, b2b procurement marketplaces um, over the next couple of years so it's certainly a trend that's in its infancy at the moment but uh, we suspect it will dominate the way purchasing in the b2b environment works over the next two to three years well and it will and if you look at it and, and we've kind of highlighted a couple of the pieces here as to why that uh, B2B integration is going to become so critical and why it's going to happen so fast. Uh, obviously, with the change in the economy and everything that's happened last year, we have seen a tremendous amount of our customers move to more of an online purchasing platform and, and really need that with inside their system. And, and part of that is 
you know, we're not talking about getting anything other like the remote deployment configure configuration allows for that uh, time to value so that you can get connected. It doesn't take long. We're not talking about installing massive, you know, anything in your system on prem to make that work. Um, you know, the reduction in the administrative administrative burden on your staff, you know, that again, freeing up that valuable time. And then there's the whole convenience and familiarity of it. You know, there's very few people out there who are not buying online or have, don't have the Amazon experience already or Staples experience, you know, Best Buy, all those pieces, they're used to doing it. And so when you enable your staff uh, to do that, you're able to get the value of their, you know, expertise over the last few years of buying online and just fitting that into your procurement process which is a lot of the staff are super excited about because it's it's not something new to learn it's very simple very easy and it's very web-based that they're used to doing and so once you're able to do a lot of that that you're able to drive that user adoption and productivity and then that's where you, you see a lot of cost reduction a lot of that cost reduction is actually a soft cost you do get a lot around and, we'll, and we will talk about that is you know the cost of buying through individual vendors versus multiple different vendors um, but the soft costs and the of that from a training perspective Perspective, a user adoption perspective, and then the streamlining and the time savings that comes with that is massive. Yeah. And then you get other values. So, like you're, you've got up here, budget control, and I think I think that's a key one. It is, Jesse. I mean, one of the things that we've identified with a lot of our customers um, is just how important it becomes in a decentralized environment where. You know, potentially you've got someone who needs the goods and services uh, processing that requisition from home. Their manager being in another location, um, the accounts or finance people need to perhaps do a final validation. Uh, the example you gave of Easter seals, you know, check and press the button at potentially another location. And you know, that process is once again replicated when the invoice arrives. So extremely challenging and enabling people at each point of that decision making process to have information on hand for instance the budget impact of that transaction it just becomes vital to managing spend um, in this new highly distributed way that we're working with yeah and uh if just sticking with that for one second i think i think the key here um is making allowing your staff to make data-driven decisions versus gut feel decisions. You know, being able to provide that budgetary look as you did in the demo where they could actually see where they were in the budget at the point of making a decision is critical. If you look at it uh, from an employee perspective, 99.9% .9 of your employees want to make the best decision possible for the company. That's what they're looking to do. But if we don't provide them with the data that they need at the point of decision, they're not able to make that decision properly. And so we hinder them. But when we give them a system like this, where they're able to actually see at the point of, of purchase, where am I at in my budget? Am I compliant? Am I, you know, are, am I following all the rules? Am I getting a good price? Am I getting all those things? Am I using the right vendors? We, we enable your, your employees to make data-driven decisions that are way better for the company and give them way more confidence in the purchasing that they're doing that it's being done properly that you're getting the best value and that it's it, it's all those pieces together so it really that data-driven decision making is really critical to any success if you're looking to make sure that you're increasing your productivity that you're reducing your costs and you have that transparency in the inside of the purchasing side well jesse i think you brought up a very important element there i mean ultimately we're talking about empowering users but often there is a concern that even when you're empowering users to make these kind of decisions and providing the information that they can easily make these decisions you know the reality is not everyone does that um, and i think that's where an important um, component of our solution comes into play and that's what we call policy compliance and risk management and what we mean here is providing the kind of tools that even though the application provides an empowering environment for people to raise requests, to approve them, to authorize them. We also need to have certain thresholds that the organization doesn't want uh, breached. They can be budgetary. So for instance, perhaps you want to route things on a different approval routing if we get to a certain percentage of available budget, or there might be a more rigorous approval process if by approving something, we are going to exceed budget. Um, and variance management might become increasingly important. For instance, if we order X widgets at $100 each and they come in at 101, 
you know, is that an acceptable transaction for the business? And different businesses will have different rules and thresholds that they deem to be acceptable. So the ability to configure these kind of rules, the risk management element of the solution uh, becomes very important. And that's one thing that we've excelled at uh, since we created the solution, trying to create a highly transparent solution that provides strong auditability and real time visibility of when something is going to be breached. Um, I think we're seeing the recognition of compliance and risk management in these times become more important. Yeah, and I, and I agree completely. You have to make sure you have, you've got that for sure. Um, if you look at, uh, and, and I, I think this is a key one here for you, Stan, if you look at uh, just the approval workflow process and, and the value of that when you're looking at a business perspective. You know, you and I spend a lot of time talking to customers about manual processes, spreadsheets, emails, um, you know, these really disparate, disparate systems that are all trying to manage a single process and the number of people and the number of different pieces and paper uh, that is improved. I, I think it's, it's critical that we highlight how effective and, and how important the approval workflow is. Uh, I absolutely concur here. Yeah. So one of the things, and in fact, I think we've got a demo in a short while that uh, has a fairly complex approval authorization workflow. Um, one of the things that we've seen is that organizations start with fairly simple workflows. You know, there might be a department head desk that has to approve uh, items. And essentially, in an automated way, they mimic uh, what they did previously with paper forms. And then they recognize over time that you can get much more granular with an automated system. So increasingly, we see organizations move from, let's say, some called departmental or cost center based approval structures. We say, well, for this GL code structure for this department, I want these parties to be involved. Or the elements that uh, are more important than just a GL structure that determine who should approve and authorize. We have nonprofit organizations that run programs. Um, we have construction organizations that have jobs. We have uh, financial services companies that have projects that have project managers that need to participate in the spending processes. And what can potentially add complexity to that is that each line item may well in fact have a different approval writing path. And so building a robust workflow engine to accommodate you know, the requirements of the mid-market has been a key task for fraction over the last 15 years. And I think we've been able to achieve that. All of those scenarios that I described, whether it's program approvals, project approvals, GL account element approvals, restricting certain approval sets to different legal entities or different people, all of that is available within our very, very powerful and flexible workflow engine. So you know, we welcome uh, the ability to custom create workflows and approval writing groups that respect what's important to an organization. Um, and we're one of the few organizations I'd like to believe that have that capability where we don't ask organizations to bend their approval matrix to fit the system, but rather we have a highly customizable workflow engine to fit their unique requirements. Well, and, and a lot of those people that are involved in the process may not be in the office. Uh, and so being able to provide them the ability to remotely approve and look at transactions is critical, um, especially as you get in disparate uh, or distributed employees all over the place, whether they're working from home, whether they're working from other offices, whatever it might be, be able to streamline that process regardless of their location is critical. Yeah, that's some important Moving into this. Around, Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. No, just in terms of remote approval. I mean, I think you bring up some really great issues here. We've always been a mobile first uh, application, and what that's meant is that you know, the application we've created works fairly seamlessly whether you're on your desktop in the office, you're on your laptop at home, or you're on your tablet. But increasingly, people are expecting smaller devices like uh, cell phones to provide much greater input into either creating requests or approving requests. And so prior to now, we've rewritten a lot of our mobile UI and uh, happy to start demonstrating that in the next couple of weeks, the great new iOS and Android native apps 
um, that we think are absolutely world class. Uh, so I just want to reinforce in a remote environment, you need a variety of devices that you can interact with and, and we're sort of charging and leading that way. Just move to me from our invoice matching process, you know, how do we close the loop? Uh, in terms of uh, we've now generated that seamless order through to Amazon, uh, we uh, now receive an invoice. What is the matching processes? I think R D three reflect that there is a massive amount of inefficiencies around the whole AP automation processes, specifically when organizations are looking to implement three-way matching. Um, they need to be able to ensure that electronically, not only have they created a purchase order, but they have recognized the receipt of any kind of variances there. So it's an area that we are continuing to enhance um, natively, fraction literally in seconds when there's a uh, purchase order associated with an invoice can flip that uh, order into an invoice. Obviously with Amazon we get great integrity of data because uh, invoicing is intrinsically linked into uh, the PO processes. And we're working very hard to make sure that other ways of getting invoices into the system as efficiently as possible uh, are delivered uh, in the coming quarters. Well, I think the, the supporting documents is a big component of that. You know, you want to be able to do that three-way match or two-way match, but you also, you a lot of times need other supporting document that goes with that. So Amazon and Staples and all those guys do a great job of uh, really providing you, you know, with the shipping, the shipping material, with the invoice, uh, it matches up quite nicely. But there are other things that need to be attached and put in there. And so we support the ability to drag and drop documents in those transactions. So from an audibility perspective, if anybody were to ever go back and look, all the information's there. Emails can be attached, PDFs can be attached, Word documents, Excel sheets, whatever you need can be attached in that transaction and they live with that transaction forever uh, so that you have the ability to go back, look at them and move those. And I think that that's, again, it's that critical uh, piece if you are working with an Amazon and you're, you're getting those confirmations and those type of things and you wanna make sure that that's all part of your process, our system is enabled to do that. So what? I suppose as we move towards the end of today's presentation, you know, a lot of people ask us how we can extract information out of the system. Um, and Fraction is clearly a very rich data set of information with regard to the repositioning, ordering, uh, vendor performance and the like. Uh, it's interesting to see how things have changed over the last couple of years. Um, Fraction traditionally has provided fairly simplistic reporting and made the more flexible reporting uh, solutions available by Excel and third party sort of BI tools. But I think Jesse, now, you know, as we've built up uh, almost 15, 20 years with the domain experience and the spend analytics, and tools like Power BI in particular have become more affordable to smaller organizations. I think we're going to see a, an absolute sea change in terms of how we expose spend visibility, identify savings opportunities, and just enable the data to be used more effectively, for instance, in supplier negotiations, vendor management, and the like. Um, and very pleased to see some of the movement here where Fraction will be shipping with built-in analytics um, based on Power BI that provide very detailed insight into internal performance, you know, to where risk is concentrated, but importantly, where the savings opportunities are. I think this is becoming increasingly important for our customer base. Yeah, and if you look at it, everybody wants to see visibility into what they're spending and where they're spending it. And if you want to get the best value from your vendors, you need to be able to analyze who you're spending with, what you're spending on, and what kind of pricing you're getting you know sometimes you'll you'll sign with a vendor and say yeah let's let's do this but they're not they might give you great price on one little piece of, of your business but what you don't see is the other parts of your business where they're not doing that it's interesting in our discussion with amazon and, and you and i were talking with the sten uh, with them the other day is when you deal with someone like an amazon or a staples or some of these guys who have tons of providers of um vendors providing stuff to them the ability to get a better price like Amazon may not always be the cheapest there's no question on that but at the same time 
their platform is becoming more and more competitive with the vendors that are mm -hmm. supplying um, their their goods on that site because it's competitive and they create a competitive place for it. And so taking advantage of that and having your business count there where you can get more dollars on it makes a big difference. Absolutely. The, you know, and then a Staples, if you're buying, yeah. And, and like a Staples, instead of saying, I'm going to buy, you know, some of my stuff at Office Depot, some of my stuff at Staples, some of my stuff at, you know, um, somewhere else. If you're able to consolidate that and go back to those individuals and say, listen, this is what we're buying. This is how much we need better pricing. Uh, you know, those vendors are certainly willing to work with lots of our people, even in some of the smaller accounts, to provide better pricing for them. And so if you're able to, to explain yourself and, and show what you're spending, um, you are in a much, much bigger, better place of leverage than you would be otherwise. Yeah, completely agree. Uh, I think we're seeing increasingly as well concepts of communities coming through where people are starting to spend, starting to manage spend in a particular environment. We're seeing it for healthcare, we're seeing it for uh, schools, we're seeing it for particular verticals uh, where these sort of in the Amazon marketplaces are starting to exist to be able to get uh, information out. Um, Jesse, we've come to the sort of end of uh, today's demo. So I had some problems uh, uh, trying to get through some of the slides. Uh, Jolene, are there any questions that we have uh, got from the audience? I know that people have been typing in uh, or anything else, Jesse, that you feel we should be covering? Yes, we had a few that come through. Um, so now we'll open it up for questions. If you have any questions, please enter them into the question section of your GoToWebinar. And we'll give that a minute in case any more come through. And just a reminder, everyone, we do have subject matter experts here. This is a great opportunity to have your questions answered in real time. And a few did come through, the first yeah. being, oh, go ahead, Jesse. I was just going to say, Julian, it is interesting. You know, one of the one of the things that we've been discussing, and then just before we get there, just because I, it, a lot of the times it'll come up as a question, but two people don't really realize, realize um, a lot of these big vendors are now dealing with PPE um, products. And so, you know, a lot of people have been, have been paying quite a bit of money to be able to do that. I would suggest that if you're you're requiring PPE equipment or any of that type of stuff, that you start looking at some of these bigger sites like the Amazons of the world. Uh, there's a, a huge value and a huge savings to be found through some of those bigger sites. So if you're not doing that, that would be one of my recommendations up front, um, just because we know so many companies have to follow that requirement and need that PPE, but haven't had a really good place to go find it. So I just want to throw that out there as a as a suggestion. We did see, I was astounded uh, when a couple of our clients said we buy all of our PPE through Amazon, and I I didn't even know Amazon did that. I'm sure most people don't, um, but there are some big vendors out there that are providing great deals, and you're able to get quite a selection out doing that. Sorry, Jolene, go ahead. No worries. That's a great point. So the first question that's come through is, how does the system handle budget commitments? Yeah, just let me uh, grab that if it's okay from, uh, yep. I'm not sure I was able to demonstrate it as clearly as I would have liked. So, uh, Fraction recognizes that some organizations view commitments as uh, a combination of open purchase orders uh, as well as the received amounts, or in some cases only the received amounts of items. And when we expose budgetary information, those graphs that we briefly went through when we were running through the approval process. Part of what we do there is we deduct from the available budget, not only actual spend that's gone through the AP system, but we also deduct uh, open orders and received items so that you can see what your open to spend is. So even though an organization may not fully support commitment accounting or encumbered accounting, we still provide uh, that insight. We think it's hell of a useful to have insight into what is going to impact your budget as well. So that's in the real-time budget reporting as well as in our Excel-based reporting. All the states of a purchase requisition, all the states of a purchase order are available. So if you've got fairly unusual commitment accounting requirements, we've been able to accommodate them in all kinds of sectors, whether it's the public sector and education, some of our federal government's uh, uh, contracts as well, uh, awfully supportive from a commitment accounting perspective. 
Wonderful. We have another. Can you add project components to allocations? Yeah, uh, Jenny, we see this increasingly in a lot of organizations um, where they have overarching budgets that uh, are associated with a project. Um, some accounting solutions um, do have project accounting enabled and where that is supported, obviously Fraction supports it as well. But increasingly we see organizations feeling that uh, they are more ad hoc in terms of the way that they manage budgets and you know, simply have spreadsheets, Excel templates that uh, manage their budgetary process. And in those environments, Fraction is able to add any kind of custom allocation fields to either the requests, the orders, or the invoices. Um, and these can have their own budgets. And importantly, these budgets are not necessarily restricted to the financial periods that your accounting system would have, although they can be. Um, they can also span those periods. So you can have budgets that span uh, financial year ends that can uh, only be for a single period, like the project itself. And they can go quite granularly as well. So we can go down to 16 levels of granularity on our project budgets. So Jolene, that's a really long-winded answer, but uh, the short version is yes. The longer version is what I sort of described. Yes, and and the other part, so the, there is the project component, but if you also look at it from a, you know, could be used for other things. So in the not-for-profit space where they've got grant funding and they're dealing with restricted funds, uh, we see a tremendous amount of people looking and wanting to have the same type of control and be able to allocate to those funds the same way you would if you were in a more of a project-based scenario. Um, and so it, it does traverse across many different industries where they need those costs to be allocated to something, whether that's a grant, a fund, a project, um, and we facilitate that throughout the whole process. Great, we've had one more th come through. Which other vendors can be connected with punch-out integration? Uh, that's, that's a great question. So uh, as I was mentioning earlier, we've done about 35 to 40 integrations with other vendors. Um, and those vendors, if you know, we could certainly bring, uh, let you know, if, if you ever asked that, we could certainly let them know. But any, it's all about uh, what we call the CXML protocol. And so any vendor who has is got a website that's CXML enabled, we're actually able to create a connection too. So as I was, as discussing earlier, um, there's the big ones, obviously your Staples, your Amazon, your Best Buys, the Office Depots of the world, which are all enabled, but there's lots of vendors out there. Uh, we find in the um, biotech world that Thermal Fisher, Thermal Fisher is a big one that a lot of companies use and Granger, you know, from a lot of construction and uh, heavy duty mechanic type stuff, they use the Granger accounts. Um, we can connect to anybody who has that CXML enabled uh, website. Um, and if we haven't done it before, it's not hard to do. And so we're totally open to talking to anybody about doing that. You know, and we have, there, there's lots of different uh, vendors out there that do provide that. So we're certainly open to it. But like I said, we've done the majority of the normal or the big ones that you would see out in the normal marketplace, uh, about 35 or 40 of them. Perfect. And give me one minute as I take back the screen. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Stanton and Jesse, for your informative presentation and for taking the time to be here today. For more information on Fraction, visit our website at swktech.com and select Fraction under the Procurement Software section in the Products tab. Thank you everyone for attending our webinar. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you very much, Diane.